Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As you will all by now know that these lectures are a Saba initiative, but that we all embrace the legal system. So we would be greatly pleased if this initiative was in fact hijacked by all uh, bars so that as legal representatives, we could all whether, whether we be councils, attorneys, students, or whatever members of the public, we, we could all be better representatives of the South African public. Today, we introduce Lewis. Now, Lewis Bielski is, <laughs> he is a very interesting character. He's worked at a veterinary hospital. He's worked for the Durban Child Care Center. He's been a re researcher for the University of Durbanville. He was a candidate attorney. He was a claims handler for an insurance company. He's good at negotiation, I understand. He's done other very interesting things. He's been a courier rider in England, and he's been an English teacher in South Korea in Seoul, then where it becomes important to us, more important to us than the legal community, he became a law reports editor in 2006. And then his career to date spanned being a senior editor, a managing editor. And as we see him on our screens today, he's a case law product manager. Speaking for myself, Lewis, I can't tell you how many times that I felt that um, sweat gather on my face when I'm asked by a judge, and what is your authority, Mr. Kerr Phillips? And then I look at um, your head notes or um, your head notes on the case I have before me, and I say to myself, thank God there's the answer. So we are very, very grateful for you to be speaking to us today, and we look forward to what you have to say. And ladies and gentlemen, I now introduce Lewis. He's going to give us a, um, a lecture relating to LexisNexis. Thank you, Lewis. Thank you, Graham. Um, yeah, no, I, uh, you've reminded me of my um, uh, very patchy history on the way to um, case law, and and case law is um, where I found my happy spot. Um, and and I'm very fortunate to have had ten years at Juta, the, the main competitor, and um, now I find my really even higher sweet spot uh, with Lexus Nexus. Um, and and we just myself and and Shabash Pele, the managing editor, and the rest of the team, uh, we we just live and breathe um, case law. And, and also what, what makes us so incredibly lucky as a law reports editors is that our, our case law is, is just unprecedented anywhere else in the world. Um, we, we've got this incredibly rich and beautiful Roman Dutch uh, law. And then on top of that, we've got this very modern um, constitution on top of it. And then we've got our judges grappling every day with the most fat, issues of municipal tenders gone wrong, state capture, um, judiciary being having to intervene in, in different matters and separation of powers issues coming to, 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 to the fore, and, and our judges grappling with our, our massive um, social and, and economic issues. Um, you know, being a law report editor anywhere else would be incredibly boring. So, um, um, and, and there, there as well comes um, the, the challenge to, to all of you as practitioners, because I'm, I'm very lucky. Um, I don't practice, I just get to sit and read case law most of the day and, and do law reports. But, but the challenge for you practitioners is that you're incredibly busy all day and, and to keep up with South African case law and the pace and the variety and, and the complexity of it is incredibly challenging. And um, I, 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 I so sympathize Graham, about the sweat on your brow when, when you called about having to justify your, your authority and, and, and back up your point with authority because um, 
What, what if you have missed something? Or, or what if your authority is still good in law, but it's not the best uh, for those circumstances or those facts? What if it isn't? Um, what if the judge has something better? Or what if your, heaven forbid, your opponent has something better? So, so that's where my, my, my presentation comes in. Um, I'll just um, share my screen uh, now. Um, let me just um, share. Okay, if um, you should be seeing uh, my, my PowerPoints, um, let me just um, get the slideshow going. Yeah, there we go. Um, th th this is where um, our, our happy place is. Um, I, I hope it's working and Ahmed, please let me know if it's not. Uh, you should be looking at uh, my LinkedIn profile. Um, fine, fine. For Shabash and I, thank you, thank you. Um, for Shabash and I, um, this is our happy place is, is LinkedIn where we get to, to engage with everybody. Um, so guys, if, if you don't know about it, um, we post at least two cases a day here um, in the morning, topical cases with, with a little humble summary. Um, it's, it's, our summary is, is not really a head note. It, it's just to draw your attention to the issues and, and the really basic facts. Um, we normally post this at um, around six in the morning and then another one later at about eight in the morning. And if, if something really sensational has happened with Trevor Manuel or um, Julius Malema or, or Dudu Mnieni or something, we'll, we'll post another one later in the afternoon. Although we, we'd like to keep it for the next morning um, to, to sort of have something consistent. Um, and then as well, what we do, um, th those same cases we offer in um, an emailer. And, and at the moment, um, it, it's only offered, uh, we started it early this year. So at the moment, it's only offered for, for sharing amongst yourselves or where you can sign up for it. So this is quite handy because, you know, LinkedIn is great because you can see the comments and interact with everybody. But it, it is nice to have um, two fresh cases delivered to your inbox in the morning and, uh, you know, so it's before your day gets really busy. And then the hyperlinks go through to the um, full judgments. And then, um, my colleague Shabar for working week. It gets a bit much to, to remember. We can't even remember what we posted. Never mind um, people approaching us weeks later and say, how about that case that you posted on, on summary judgment? We can't remember. So Shabash has um, compiled them all in a monthly index. And um, we do post this on LinkedIn. And, and also anybody can sign up for this. Then. Um, I'll also share the link. You can just sign up and then that, this index will be delivered every month to your inbox. And um, Shabash is brilliant. She's, she's arranged all of the cases under um, main topics. And then um, you can browse through there. And then the whole index will also contain um, the, the summaries that we've had on LinkedIn and um, the citations will have a link through to the full case. So I, I think, this index is, is particularly useful um, because we, we pick the cases just because of their general interests. And so to have this collection handy and, and just browse it uh, when you do have time and then have a read of the cases you want, um, it, it's a real sort of heads up and, and a time saver. And um, yeah, th this is where um, Graham was mentioning, um, you know, that, that sort of anxiety um, because of our busyness of our, of our case law and um, because our law is, is just so complex and, and because people tackle it from so many different directions, you, you really do have to search properly. Um, and there, there is always that anxiety that, that you're going to miss something. So the first thing I, I wanted to cover is, is over the years we've developed um, techniques for, for searching safely and Safi is, is amazing, the fact that it's free, um, and they've got this vast repository running back so many years. Um, that your, your first port of call for Safi is the general search bar. 
and and that that is it is pretty good. Um, and after now you see here, I've just searched for interim interdict, and um, tons of results obviously. So what you can do is you can filter them uh, by title, by date, or by database. And by database, you can narrow it down um, to all the courts. They essentially have wonderfully uh, arranged all of their cases by courts. Um, that is uh, very useful. And then a little hidden thing, and no, most people didn't know about it. Um, Safi actually have a citator or, or the equivalent of a notary. Um, it's actually global. Uh, it, it's an international thing um, with, with the South African data on it. And it's it's very, very effective. So when, when you've put a case in, um, here, it actually shows you all of the later cases referring to this that have reached Safley. And um, very, very nice. Um, I, I find it um, very good. I, I sort of have Safley open plus Lexis and, and my other resources pretty much all day. Um, I use it a lot. The, the, the secret weapon that we have for Safley is, is Google Advanced Search. Now, because there's so many cases in there um, and they're not arranged by um, a subject index, like they're, they're not curated, they, they, they just stay there. Um, we, we've found out that if you go to Google advanced search, um, you, you're now gonna harness all of the artificial intelligence and just epic amount of algorithms that Google's refined over the years. And, and down at the bottom, you just put in Safley's website and then it, it focuses all of Google's power only on that website. Now you can also do it on Orsley or Bailey if you're looking for UK cases, you, you can do it on any of the um, other resources out there, Zimbly or, or Africanly. And um, the keywords that you're gonna use, those are gonna make or break your search. Um, down at the bottom, if, if you've got too much, you, you can actually limit the results up to a month, a week, or, or a year ago. I sometimes do that if I want a recent case. But your, your keywords are, are make or break, and they've got the options. Cases will come up with all these words, this exact word, any of these words, so just some of them will get results. Um, none of these words if you want to exclude something. But just as an example, I'm, I'm looking for cases on pure economic loss. So now I know that the judges always use these three words um, without hyphenation and in this sequence and with the spelling. So I'm, I'm happy now to put this in this exact word or phrase because I want cases that have pure economic loss in them. Now, um, I'd like to do it with situations to do with building or construction contracts, but now, now here's where the power of it is. I'm not sure if the judge is going to refer to it as, as a building contract or a construction contract, or he might use the word agreement. So I'll just put all of those words in there, and I'll put them in any of these words section. Now, now this is very, very effective. Um, if, if you had put all of these words in all of these words, you might miss some cases because then the, the system is going to think that you, you want all of these words appearing in, in every result. And that's not going to work so well. Just an exa another example, if I had a claim against the police and um, I, I was looking for um, psychological sequelae, uh, I'm also going to do this. Um, I'm not quite sure if the judge is going to refer to it as um, unlawful arrest or detention. And there's no way I can put that in exact word or phrase because I'm not sure of the sequence or, or the proximity. He might have and or of or something in them. So I'll just pop them in any of these words. So now I'm going to at least surface cases with um, unlawful arrest and uh, detention in it and, and see what comes up. And I, I do know that psychological and, and sequelae will, will be in there, but I'm again, I'm not as confident as pure economic loss that will be in those sequences. He, he might have it in a slightly different arrangement. So that's why I'll put it in all of these words. And th this selection of words here can really make or break your, your search. So <clears throat> you have to imagine that the scenarios and the language the judge would use and try and anticipate that and try and capture it with how you, you capture these search terms in, in these um, 
bars. And what, once you get the hang of it, it is very, very powerful. And when, when the results get served up um, on the internet, you, you can actually copy this, highlight it, and, and then if you paste the results with, and keep all the styles, you, you paste it into an email or a Word document, the, these here will, will link through to that case. And I mean, that's very useful to, to email a colleague or to keep it for yourself um, for later, because then, then you're giving um, these beautiful results. It shows you some of the, the terms and it's at your, your colleague or yourself later are able to click through to the case. So, so that's um, very handy. And another tip is once you've gotten to the case um, and you want to save the file, what, what I do is I, I copy the entire case name and, and up to uh, the neutral citation. Um, and then I download the PDF. And then when I save it, I, I paste that into the name of the file. So that's quite a handy. I do get rid of the case number because it generally convention is case name uh, and the neutral citation. And also this, this <clears throat> slash sign will, will have problems with your computer. It doesn't like to save that slash sign. So uh, I would get rid of the case no number. The, the, the hazard, um, and, and I love Safley, it's awesome. And when I do get a case, I go, I go to the law site, um, their citator, and I check for later cases. And if there's a later case with the same name, I might be alerted to the fact that it's gone on appeal. But here's a good looking case, um, and, and a recent one too, a 2019 case. And, and, and this case, just two weeks ago, um, the order in was, was, was set aside at the Supreme Court of Appeal. So, so there's your hazard um, that when you're searching through all of this, there, there's nothing to alert you to the fact that it might have been reversed on appeal or, or that there's some other qualifier on this case. Um, and, and yeah, that, that's where your, your sweat in the brow comes from because um, you, you just don't want that situation of, of embarrassment and costs and um, an unimpressed client. Um, yeah, that, that, that is, is your, your, your sort of constant hazard. So um, that's where um, Shabash and her team come in. Um, this is Shabash Pele. She's our um, managing editor. And um, she, she has the task of reading all 3,000 um, high court or above cases that come to us every year and, and deciding on selection for our, for our various series, your, your flagship all SA, arbitration, commission, competition, um, intellectual property, labor law, pension, and, and our quantum by Henny Klopper or, or our tax reports. Now, that, that's our first step in, in saving you trouble because she does that selection and she only, for our all South Africans, she only picks about one in 10 cases that come to us. So in, in a curated law reports, you're not gonna have to sift through cases that don't make law and, and what, why she does the selection is does it make new law? Does it interpret something? Does it resolve uh, a conflict between divisions? Uh, does, does it say something useful about legislation? Or does it take our, our common law further? And, and that's the entire team um, of Law Reports uh, crew that uh, just live and breathe case law all day. Um, and, and we've also got um, a whole lot of authors like um, Peter Blomkamp, uh, Advocate Silk uh, on, on our tax and John Grogan on our labor. Um, here you can see Advocate Blomkamp with uh, my colleague Shanae. They, um, they spent two years uh, scanning the Prentice Hall cases, uh, over 50,000 of them from 1922 to 1995. And, and they are now offered free online with the All South African Reports for, for essential case law. Um, and, and the next thing that we do is, is those, those judgments are, are part of a structure. They, not only do, do we harvest you know, the case details, um, we also, because it's reportable and it's saying something new to the body of, of the case law in the index, <clears throat> we've now categorized it um, under civil procedure, litigation, abuse of course processes. So now this case is gonna sit in the index with similar cases so that you can browse and find it. And then also there's the um, head note, which is, which is really useful. Uh, 
as, as a quick snapshot of, of what new law this case brings. And, and it really is time saving. And, and our electronic system also leverages uh, the structure. And then the key part is um, the case annotations, the cases that are referred to in this judgment, which we, we very carefully curate this. And, and there's another nuance to this is, is that the earlier cases are, are given a sentiment. They are referred to, they discussed, they're applied. So, so there's a complexity to this whole body of case law from 1828 um, to date. It's an absolutely massive body of case law that is all intertwined, uh, cases that refer to earlier cases that refer to earlier cases and cross-pollinate. So it, it's basically a, a really huge neural network. Now, now, researching the note up or the annotations, we know it's very time consuming. Now, our, our classic Mattel joint versus Indumeni, I mean, just look at that. Um, the, the late the note up is so extensive. To have to research Mattel joint would, would yeah, it, you can imagine hours and hours ahead late at night. So where, where we've tried to help um, with our legal Citata, which is our neural network of, of 80,000 interconnected cases, is we've attached as part of that neural network signals. So um, green for, for applied, approved, neutral, just referred to in a footnote, or cautionary if it's been distinguished, and obviously read, criticized, or reversed on appeal. Now, now the complexity, I've, I've just shown a, a mock-up of, of what it could look like later cases referring to earlier cases and, and the complexity of this neural network. But yeah, it, it is very complex and we've got very, very clever algorithms running in the legal citator to, to help your searches. So when you're doing a search, um, and again, I, I've searched our system for pure economic class. Now, now what's handy here is we'll give you an aggregate signal uh, next to the case. So now with four-way haulage, um, our system has run some very, very clever stuff in the background to tell me that four-way haulage is a very important case. And our algorithms, which look at court hierarchy and the entire notes up history of this case is telling me that it's still a good case. And um, standard charted, it's telling me um, the, the distinguished signals have prevailed for some reason, so I need to be cautious and have a good read and check the note up on that one. And um, we, we've tried to make things easier with, with the note up. Um, this national signal is, is your constitutional and SEA cases, and the divisional signal is, is the signals, the note up cases of that division, so, so of the Supreme Court of Appeal. And now you can actually filter the no interrupt cases by the, the sentiment that they referred to. I don't really want to read 125 cases that only refer to Oda Kral, so I'll untick that one. I might want to look at the 51 that have positively applied to it, but if I'm trying to get an angle on Oda Kral, uh, I might want to look at the 14 cases that have given it uh, a, a cautionary or, or a distinguished um, signal. So this these signals in this neural network that, that we've got in our, in our very carefully curated and edited structure is very, very handy. Um, and I, I always like to use this case to, to explain the added complexity of this neural network because th this case was um, initially head noted by, by the editors as uh, Actio de Corpore case, um, injuries by animals, because um, the young lady, uh, Ms. Duval, she went riding and, and she was badly maimed by, by Solomon's horse, which was running free and, and, and it was aggressive. And, and when, she, when she sued for damages in the Cape High Court, so the judge president at that time heard it and, and he awarded her handsomely. But when, when Solomon took it on appeal to the Supreme Court of Appeal, they, they had some uh, words for, for the, the, the judge um, at the Cape High Court and that he had descended into the arena and um, he, he had been kind of interfering to Solomon's witnesses, and, and he seemed to be supportive of Ms. Duval, the plaintiff's witnesses. So what, what has happened with this case, um, if you look at the normal, traditional notar up, you, you're not, it, it, it's just bland. It just shows you the later cases that have referred to it. 
But the, the added complexity in this neural network is that the later cases refer to earlier cases for very different reasons. Now we see in Solomon that, um, yeah, there is a, a, a lot of the later cases, there's 29 cases, later cases that we've got in our note rough. A, a good amount of them refer to it for actio de porpri, and then some of it on damages or damages on appeal, and a small amount on evidence, but the bulk of the cases refer to Solomon for judicial bias and judges descending into the arena. And many of these cases are actually labor cases or, or criminal law cases. So having that in mind, you, you can see just how much more complicated this um, neural network is, is, is that it's not just later cases referring to earlier cases and, and earlier cases. It depends on the, the, the legal topic that they're referring to it. So it, it does get very much tangled, uh, this, this 80,000 intertwined cases on, on different topics and with different sentiments. Uh, distinguish, applied, uh, discussed, followed, not followed. So if we look at Solomon, um, at least uh, these signals um, are going to help you with um, the navigation. And, and it really does. Once you get the hang of, of these filters and, and been able to run through the note up, it, it's really going to help your, your research time. Um, we, we are working on making it even more effective, and, and that's sort of under uh, cloak and dagger uh, top secret wraps. We, we're hoping to launch towards the end of this year and um, going to a whole lot better to be able to, be able to navigate um, all of this. So that uh, when you're going up to these, um, these steps, uh, you've at least got uh, that, that backup of the, that neural network and these very clever algorithms of that 80,000 at least uh, you'll have hopefully a, a little bit more less um, sweat on your brow uh, when, when you when you take these steps. Let me um, just um, look at some of the recent cases um, that we've had. Um, just on that point, um, here, here's one that. Um, really took my fancy because um, as Graham mentioned, um, I have been in insurance for a few years. So, so I, I did have initial, uh, a lot of empathy for King Price um, in this matter. Um, but, but really we, we, we post um, at least two cases a day, sometimes three or four, but it, it's just not enough. The, the, the kind of cases that Shavash and I see that are of interest and that we would want to share are, are, are so many. Um, really, I, I know I, I, I'm trying to sell the law reports, but we, we do the index for free. We do these cases for free we, we, and we love doing it and the interaction is great. But if you, if you really do want to stay on top of it, there's nothing beating reading your law reports every month when they come, whether on print or online, um, in addition to this. Um, with, with this King Price case, um, King Price actually repudiated um, because the, the driver of, of Concise had, um, had, had made some false statements. Um, after the claim, they had interviewed him and um, he made false statements about the circumstances. And, and yeah, he said something about his wife having to be rushed to hospital, having a baby, that's when the accident happened and it was on a corner. Yeah, yeah, it turns out it wasn't, uh, he wasn't alone in the car, there was probably alcohol involved and it happened on a, on a dead straight road. Now. When, when you hear those kind of things as an insurer, and, and this is where I have some sympathy with King Price, uh, that's just obviously repudiation material. Um, accident late at night on a straight road, and yeah, uh, when the story doesn't match up, the dog ran across the road, that kind of thing. And that's why I rolled uh, total right off through a wall um, yeah, on a straight road. These things don't match up. But anyway, the, the SCA uh, quite correctly said, um, that wasn't valid because um, those false statements couldn't have been attributed to Contas Consulting, who was the actual client, and, and the driver didn't make those statements on behalf uh, of, of the insured. So um, another case, which um, we posted this morning, um, fascinating one, is um, Katz versus Welts um, defamation matter. Um, very, very interesting read. I, I can highly recommend this one. Um, 
th this was our, our famous Nose Week. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, no Nose Week is famous, great gripping articles. Um, they had done a cover with, with a very prominent attorney, uh, Leonard Katz, uh, a, a director at ENS. And um, yeah, he, he had um, pursued them for, for, for defamation. And, and um, the judge, I must say, um, really, really thoroughly unpacks the law of defamation and to do with defenses uh, and media and media privilege. Very, very nice instructional um, case. And um, I just wanted to find uh, the, the, the really good quote at uh, about para 150, which I thought sort of summed up the case. Um, they, they talked about, um, on the evidence, uh, it is clear that the particular focus of the defendant's publications was to attack Mr. Katz, and in pursuit of this goal, Mr. Welts was not about to let the truth get in the way of what he considered to be a good story. And then at para 152, uh, the court says it is not in the public interest and can be of no public benefit to write and publish untrue statements about an individual. And that basically summed it up. And um, the award was 330,000 uh, in damages. And then interestingly, right at the end, um, there, there's a very interesting bit about um, the, the defendant, Mr. Welts, being a lay litigant and representing himself um, and, and normally there would have been punitive costs orders and, and the judge in this case has quite a nice discussion about him being a lay litigant and, and almost in a way gives him a break uh, with punitive costs on this matter because he'd already been um, marked with two, puni two um, not punitive, but two cost orders pr prior to uh, getting to this case. So really good one and and tomorrow we, we're going to be posting or the next day another def, uh, defamation case which is also uh, very interesting the the case which i think um this month really took my fancy was um uh that case that we we looked at the, the high court case that we'd seen on safley is um miss wenzel who who had bought a brand new uh reno quid and and she'd had a whole lot of issues with it and and she had taken it back to to reno and and they tried to fix it and eventually uh when, when she had gotten to the high court that the high court ordered um cancellation of the agreement and that she must return the car and that she must be refunded the full purchase price and any finance costs and th this is a really really good case on on the consumer protection act um let me just uh get down to here. Um, there were so many interesting features about this. Um, the, the Supreme Court of Appeal found uh, in, in favor of the motor company because they, they on, on, on various grounds, but basically it was that she hadn't exhausted her internal remedies in, in section 69. Um, and, and there were other issues about the interpretation of what a defect is. Very, very interesting case. I, I would highly recommend reading this one. I, I was, um, I, I know it's uh, the a correct application of the sections of the Consumer Protection Act, um, but when we did post this case, there was a lot of feedback uh, that people thought that um, it was unfair on Ms. Wenzel and that perhaps the Consumer Protection Act needs to be adjusted or needs to be some other remedies because she had actually uh, pursued a remedy with uh, the motor, motoring ombud who had taken quite a long time to get back to her and then um, had, had not been able to help her because of a jurisdiction issue, which, which the SCA, uh, in, in hindsight, it didn't agree with. And also, when, when we looked at the act and the, the description of um, what, what a defect is, and, and roughly in, in layperson's terms, um, that, that the defect is something that an average person would reasonably not be, be acceptable for, for that particular product. Now, now that's where we, we also saw a lot of conflicting opinion on, on social media is that people were of the opinion that if you buy a brand new car, the reason that you're paying such a premium for a brand new car is that it doesn't have any defects, that you don't have to keep taking it back to the dealership. So, so there was a lot of public support for, for Ms. Fensel that 
if you buy a new car, you shouldn't have to keep taking it back for various defects uh, and that you should be able to return it or, or get a refund. So um, interestingly, uh, the, the SCA does quote uh, from the High Court, and, and this is the bit that I liked, not to, to give my colors away, um, but, but the High Court said that uh, the courts must take a robust approach towards the economic giants and who can flex their financial muscle to bully unsuspecting consumers to accept flawed goods and raise all sorts of spurious defenses and denials. In this case, there were too many flaws or defects for a new vehicle. And uh, the court of quo was inclined to lead towards protecting the rights and interests of the applicant. So yeah, th these are just three um, recent cases that um, are, are just so interesting. And, and there's just so many that Shabash and I would like to post and, and, and we, we, we simply don't have the capacity because we're very busy uh, with, with our normal day job, uh, maintaining these. these um, we've got 11 uh, active law report series that, uh, and, and a lot of them go to print monthly. So, so yeah, we, we do have our hands full. I just wanted to show you um, a, a search on my Lexus Nexus. Now I'm doing this live, which, which is always um, somewhat scary if there's connection issues. Um, let me just use the same topic that I, I did before. I just wanted to show you a few tips for those of you who do have uh, a Lexus Nexus account. Now, here we see the results that I did the screenshot of. Um, if th this, this is done it by relevance. So, so the system looks at the, the later um, citator signals, the note up. The, the frequency of the keywords, and it does some other secret things that um, are probably our tech guys don't want me to, to share on, on um, social media or, or, or videos, but it does very, very clever things to rank the importance um, of the cases that it displays. Now, I, I can just browse and, and go through these cases. Um, let me just get uh, back up to the top. Um, see if I can move that. Uh, Okay. So should I want to filter this? I can actually filter the results. Um, I can use the, the, the cited signals. I can filter by, by only signals that have got green results or neutral or, or um, distinguished signals. Or, and, and this is very useful, I can actually flip the results to look at only the most recent cases. So, so when I do that, it'll, it'll show me um, the most recent cases first and then going down to the um, older ones. And if I had to go into a case, let me just go back to relevance. We, we do have some handy features here. Um, what you can do with this case uh, is email it to yourself or, or to a colleague or download this electronic version in Word or PDF. Or um, what you can do, uh, there's, um, uh, yeah, it's a bit blocked now, but there, there's a little um, PDF icon here, and that'll download the original document um, as we published it. So that's actually much better for handing up to court. And, um, it, it just, it's an exact replica of the printed version um, that uh, was printed. So um, it's got the marginal letters and um, yeah, that is about um, the functionality. And obviously we've got our legal citator here and um, the, the notary up or the later cases, what we call the judgment treatment is here and the judgment that this case cited is here and um, the judgment details that the citator here because it pops up automatically on the side is, is a really useful and, and powerful tool to, to make sure that this case is still good in law. And you might, by looking at the note rough cases and browsing, you might find that case that um, is also on topic and it's a later case and it, it might just be a better authority for, for your particular facts or your circumstances. So um, if there are any questions, um, let me stop um screen sharing and then uh i'll be able to see, see you better
uh, Louis, um, I personally have an immense appreciation. Appreciation is not the right word. I would rather say admiration for what you and your team have been has and have been doing. Thank you so much for that. Um, is there any questions? Well, I, I'm with my in. It's Graham Kerr Phillips speaking. Yes, Graham. Uh, so, uh, okay. Um, all right. Um, Lewis? Yes. I'm sold. So how do we uh, contact you to, to be able to prescribe to your, um, apply to be a member of your system and so on and so forth? Um, what I'll do is, is I, I will share, um, I, I, will, I will share all of the, the, the logins and the links and, and my email with, with Ahmed so that he can distribute it uh, by email to this whole group. And, and the, our, our email, which you can reach us at any time, um, is, is just one word lowercase. It's caselaw at lexisnexus.co.za. So um, that, that's our, our general one is, um, and, and I'll just give it again. Sorry, I should have had it at the end of our slide, but just one word lowercase, caselaw at lexisnexus.co.za. And um, of course, remember that you can always find me on LinkedIn. Um, ju just find me on LinkedIn and um, just message me there and you can reach me there as well. Um, I, I will share with Ahmed the, the subscription link for our, our daily cases. And again, I'm sorry, it's only available to advocates, judges and magistrates at the moment, but we're just finding our feet with it and, and ironing out some bugs and just seeing what the demand is. Um, but you can also subscribe to the monthly index, um, which is open to everybody. And um, yeah, and then please do connect with me on LinkedIn because it's, it's a fabulous community. I, I see that Mohammed has got a question. Uh, do we have a comment? Um, I've been using LexisNexis from Pupilage last year. And uh, the platform was given to us for free, which I really appreciate. And now that I'm a first year practicing uh, uh, counsel, they, you have a reduced rate of, I think, 50%. And the plethora of information that's available to you, it's at your fingertips, and it's better than going into a library. So that's just a comment I want to do and say, and, and echoing what Emma said earlier, the work that you and your team do is excellent, and uh, all the best going forward. Thank you, Mohammed. And and when 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 you are out of that um, discount period, um, my, my colleague, uh, Sarah Wilson, has, has put together um, amazing package for, for, for practitioners um, in their first year, all these qualifications, but um, an amazing package, like case law, legislation, commentary works, and very, very affordable. So um, please just reach out to us and, and we'll try and arrange uh, the best solution for you. Um, yes, uh, Nikhil, um, Nikhil's also got a question. Hi, Lewis, can you hear me? We can hear you, Nikhil. Uh, thanks, Lewis, for the presentation. I, I just have two questions, and I might have missed it. When you're doing the Nota upper search on Safli, uh, I just didn't catch how to do that. If you would mind. Oh, yes. Um, just um, once you get the link, um, I, I find it by um, typing into Google. Just type the, the words Safli and law site, uh, one word law site, and, and you'll, you'll be taken to the the um the Staffley uh, note trap, um, so um I, you know what I'm just writing a note. I, I'll share that link as well. So um uh, th th that was a really good question because um okay. we, we are in um you know frequent discussions. We 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 do work together with um we do collaborate us and Juta and Staffley to a certain extent. You know when courts change names, we we have to collaborate to make sure we have consistent citations. Um, so, so yeah, we, we don't see each other as enemies. We, we, we just competitors and it's very healthy to have, um, competition keeps us on our toes. Thank yes. And, and you had a second question. Yeah. The second question was now while using law site, I mean, would, would the best way trying to find a case that's cited using either all SA or a Juta or whichever platform that, that cites cases, cause you know, it's different. Would the best way to do it would be using party names or how would what would be the best way of trying to access 
those cases where we have the citation, but one might not necessarily have access to Juta in a particular instance or Safley uh, or, or Lexis. Yeah, well, if you don't have access to either, um, that, that Safley law site is very good. Um, Safley do have an editor who, who actually um, adds in the parallel citations, like the Juta citation. And, and every month, um, our managing editor, Shabash Pele, she sends um, that editor our, our um, all say constitutional label report so that she can put that so citations um, into the Safi database. So yeah, I, I find going into the Safi general search and, and putting the case names is best. And then I can double check the, the data of the judgment and the court to make sure I've got the right case. Um, but ha having the citation as first prize and the law site does have a, a, a window for putting in the citation and it, it works very well. Thanks so much. But Ask please, we, we, yeah, we are, we are always um, available. Um, I'm, I'm always available on LinkedIn and at the end, end of the case law um, email. So if you've got any queries or need help, uh, just reach out to us. Uh, we, we really appreciate um, interaction because we, we don't want to be isolated just making law reports. We, we've got to hear from you. Uh, it's really beneficial to us. Um, you, Louis, more comment than a question, Ahmed. Uh, firstly, just to let you know that, in fact, Safli is, uh, Safli is part of this presentation in attendance. So thank you so much. Um, and have given a, they've given a commitment to be assisting us with doing further presentations on the Safli system. But thank you so much for, for that contribution. And then secondly, uh, what the others might not know is that you came at the 11th hour to stand in for Judge Opperman. Uh, our speaker today would have been Judge He became unavailable owing to another engagement. But thank you for, so much for stepping in and, 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 and uh, for the presentation. Um, I, I think perhaps the question I have in, in, in your collaboration with Safli uh, to, to find out whether or not there might be a way that, that cases that are no longer good in law, um, that the reader could be alerted to, to that in, a, in, in the same manner as you have it in, 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 in your LexisNexis platform. Sorry, um, Lewis, did you get uh, did you get that question? No, no, no. I, I'm so sorry. It, it, it was something to do with the Safi collaboration uh, okay. question. But might you please uh, repeat your question again? Yeah. So, um, Louis, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, I can hear you now. In fact, the, I'm asking: Is there not a way that one could? with your collaborative uh, uh, involvement with Safley, find a way that to alert the reader when whether a case is no longer good in law. Because all too often we sit in court and we flip our uh, iPads or whatever the case might be and we type in Safley and get a case not knowing that this case might not necessarily be good in law at that point in time anymore. No, that, that's definitely something we, we would love uh, to discuss with them. Um, they, they are amazing uh, people, um, you know, and um, the, the speed at which they, they load their stuff and, and the depth of, of their collection is, is excellent. Um, we, we like to, you know, our, our reports, they are expensive um, compared to, obviously, Safi is free. Uh, it's especially expensive there, but um, because it's curated at, at such a high degree, um, and, and we edit them and check them. And, and because it's, every case is, is, gets plugged into this um, massive legal citator with all of its algorithms and, and the 80,000 case neural network, um, you know, that, that's what you have to pay for, the, the curation. Um, so I'd, I'd love to discuss with um, Karina, the, the head at Safley, um, and, and she's got amazing people uh, that, that she works with. Um, from, from Austley who, who are on the tech side as well. Um, so yeah, let, let's see what we can do. Um, because that, that danger, um, that, that danger of, of um, and, and it's not just being reversed on appeal, it's just that there's a better case or, or, or 
something that's that's more four squares or, or that your opponent has got a, a different angle you know a fresher case um it, it's it's always a hazard and um because our, our our case law is so fast moving um and we've got so many divisions and it's so busy um that that's going to be an, an enduring hazard um and and that's why we have such a huge team of, of law reports people in lexus and and a lot of authors working tirelessly to try and make sure that our, our stuff is, is reliable and up to date. I, I see there was a message uh, on the chat system from from Nino. Um, no, that that's a very good uh, question. Um, Nino, uh, yep. Yeah, would would Lexus Nexus together with Safley consider special packages for SA Bar members as a collaborative or, or the economies of scale option to all uh, the societies? Now, now that's. Um, that's a very, very good point. I'm, I'm just going to do a quick, um, I'm just going to capture that, Nino. Uh, yeah, I've just captured that just in case the, the messages um, fall away when we log out. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. I, I see another comment uh, just to, to do it at a slower pace. I, I think this is recorded. So I, I think Ahmed hopefully can share the video. Um, Oh, and, and Ahmed has also shared the, the case law email. Um, so yeah, um, let, let's see what we can do. I, I can't, um, my, my colleague Sarah Wilson does the, the packages and the big deals. So um, if anybody uh, does want to approach us, uh, I can connect you to her and, and she can discuss um, the, the package deals uh, for, for like whole uh, bar um, societies or, or, or any other groups. Thanks, Nino. Uh, Louis, just to add on to that, uh, this video will be available on the South African Bar Association uh, various platforms, including Facebook as well as um, LinkedIn. Uh, um, I will, however, share this with you, and uh, yeah, we can, you can you can share it as well on your various platforms there too. Is there any further questions? Thank you, Ahmed. I, I would love to share it um, as well. And and please, I, I know I, I had to go fast to try and pack all of it in. Um, but but if you've got any queries at all, please just just reach out to to myself um, and and or Shabash, and and we'll help with with research tips or, or anything else. Um, I, I think you can catch we, we we just love case law. I mean, we wake up in the morning and, and we're breathing it. We go to bed dreaming case law. Um, it, it's our thing. So uh, please just reach out to us anytime. Thank you. If there if there are no more questions. Lewis, I need to thank you very much for the, as I told you, the sweaty occasions that I've had in the past. And for me, this has been a most informative um, a meeting. And um, I certainly am going to change what I subscribe to. So thank you very much for your presentation. We're very grateful that you stepped in. And I think everyone would agree who's been part of this meeting that this has been most informative. Now, just very briefly, so that um, we can um, alert um, the people watching today that uh, what's happening next week, and this might bring a smile to some people's faces, Advocate Garth Hulley is going to speak on the importance and uh, the importance of and the need to maintain court etiquette. And um, we know that recently uh, someone has been told to shut up. So the so the um, so I imagine that um, uh, this will be very useful, um, so that we know why we shouldn't do that. So once again, Lewis, thank you very much for for your time. Um, I found it most informative. It will definitely change what I do insofar as the the research tools that I use. Thank you very much. And I, I'm going to greet everyone and say good night and come back to us again next week. Thank you so much, Graham. Um, and, and thank you all. Um, we, 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 we would just jump at any opportunity uh, to talk about case law. Thank you.